Hello and welcome to the first V3 version 3.0 uh, video. Uh, for folks that have been paying attention, I haven't been doing a lot of videos lately, so I got to play catch up. Uh, the team and I have been really busy at work on version 3.0 of the product. That's our next new major release uh, targeting kind of end of January, early February. So I've been working really hard. The beta just went out last week. This is the week of Thanksgiving now. So now it's time to start shooting some short videos, kind of show you some of the new features. Uh, get you to try it out and send feedback because we still have time to, to get some you know, awesome features in and, and get your feedback in as well. So go grab the beta on the website. The first thing you're going to notice is the UI is totally different, right? For the better. I wish I could show. I probably should have shown the old UI and now this one. Uh, the good news is it still has kind of the same same feel. Uh, so if you learn the old UI, it's not a complete relearn. It just looks way better. It's way cleaner. Collapsible navs and, and just the ability to jump around. It's awesome. So I want to focus in this short video on the MQTT broker. So we invested in our own broker technology, wrote it from, uh, from basically scratch and some open source tools. And uh, I want to show you how to turn that on and then explain a little bit kind of where we're headed, you know, why we've done it, uh, that kind of thing. So the first thing I'm going to do is jump into settings and go turn it on. So here it's off by default, but you can quickly enable it. And I'm going to save that. And by default, it allows any client to connect. You can restrict that to named, you know, uh, username and password clients. You can also restrict via the claims if clients can publish or subscribe or both. Uh, we don't have the ability in the beta to do that at a topic level, but we have future ambitions to, to enable that. Again, we, we wrote our own, so we have that ability uh, to kind of add that kind of stuff. And then you can host one or more endpoints. And the endpoints, they can be TCP or WebSocket based, host name, uh, the port, and whether or not they're secured. And you can either use your own certificate, uh, kind of bring your own, or use our default. And once I turn that on, that's that's up and running. So it's a fully compliant version 3, version 5 broker. Uh, when I say that, we ran the, the compliance tests on our side and, and by our own standards, passed those tests. Uh, that We don't have an external certification of that, but it should, should be compliant. Uh, so what I'm going to do now that I have the broker on is I'll just grab a client. You'll see I hosted on port 1. 885. So I'm just going to take this and connect. You can see we're connected with that client. I'm going to, going to go in. I have an OPC connection and I'm pulling data into a motor instance in Hivite, kind of modeling that. So what I'm going to do is just flow that out the broker. So I'm going to grab that every second and send it out the broker topic. Uh, and this is kind of Hivite 101 stuff, so I won't go through the, the details of it, but you can see that data is now flowing through the broker. The other thing I'll do really quick is pull that data back into Hivite. Now, the one thing with the internal broker and the beta release is you do need to go create a uh, connection in Hivite to interact with it, just like any other broker. So we do nothing to treat it uh, special. Uh, so you can see I have this port. Uh, one cool feature we enabled is this input discovery. So this is off by default, but what I've done is subscribe to the root of the broker so that I can auto discover topics as they show up. And what that means is if I go to inputs now and browse, you can see this will show all the topics in the broker that I've seen since I've subscribed. And um, we can import those as inputs in Hibite. You can see we subscribe to that topic and do a read. And you can see the data shows up. Now that works on any broker, right? Again, we do nothing to treat this broker special in the beta. You have to create a physical connection. In a future version, you know, in, in, uh, maybe not quite the release, but pretty soon we'll, you won't need to create this connection. It'll still be MQTT, but we know it. You know, You don't have to go build it yourself. Uh, we'll kind of auto discover that and build up topics for you. Just kind of remove that configuration. Okay, so that's the basics of just enabling it and getting started. Why did we create our own broker? Uh, the simple answer is what we're trying to do is provide customers with an out-of-the-box UNS solution, right? A lot of our customers are exploring UNS. They'll come to us and ask, hey, what broker should I use? Uh, you know, HiveMQ, EMQX, SiriusLink, all these kind of more enterprise level brokers are great solutions, uh, but they need, and some of them will just use Mosquito or whatever free open source broker because they just need something to get started. It doesn't need to be the end solution. So we wanted the easy button, something to easily enable that on any high byte node. Uh, and just to take that farther, you know, we have ambitions in 3.0. Uh, or version three of the product to also add a client in here as well, right? So I could, I don't necessarily need to go grab MQTFX or some other client to kind of see this data. I can, you know, it's still fully compliant with open standards, but I could hit a button in here and that's going to launch a client that's high by client. You can kind of view the namespace as you build it. Basically, you can stay in this tool, 
and explore and start to build your UNS all in all in one. And you don't need to go collect all the little pieces. Uh, the other side of that is, you know, looking at like an enterprise architect level, we don't want to force you to use our broker, right? So we, we believe in open standards, fully embrace those. Anything you do that's that's MQTT compliant uh, with the high byte broker, we want you to easily be able to just create a new connection out to again HiveMQ, EMQX, SiriusLink, etc. These enterprise brokers uh, and kind of move that data up there very easily, right? And we have no ambitions to be kind of an enterprise broker hosted in the cloud, high availability, um, scalability, all that. We're really focused on the factory use case. How do we get people started in the factory really fast and make it really uh, easy? So that that's really our goal. Uh, the other reason we invested in technology is because there's certain things around UNS. I mean, UNS is an awesome concept. You know, it's caught fire. Uh, people are using it. It's great. There's certain things around UNS, uh, problems it has specific to MQTT, right? Like UNS is a report by exception. So how do you do transactions through UNS? You kind of don't. You know, how do you do d device and, and data discovery through UNS? Well, in MQTT, you kind of have to subscribe, get the data and the topics, and that's how you do discovery. There's certain situations where that's not ideal, right? Uh, as an example, in the Sparkplug case, you know, we have customers with hundreds of Sparkplug nodes, which is awesome, publishing into a broker. A client comes in and has to publish a command for all those devices to issue a birth certificate so they get the schema and latest value of the devices. So that goes all the way down to each device, and you get hundreds of these birth certificates get published up to the broker, and it's just really inefficient when you try to scale that out in the concept of a factory where you have all these nodes. The broker knows that information, right? So there's no reason it has to go out to the device. So we're interested in being a fully compliant broker in the factory, but also give us access to the bytes so we can kind of help customers with these specific use cases where like little tweaks here, little tweaks there, uh, helping solve the transaction problem, helping solve issues around historical data through the UNS more, more elegantly. Uh, we can kind of get ahead there. And then any solutions we come up with, you know, we could bring back to the standard bodies, bring back to the Eclipse Foundation and say, hey, Here's one way we solved it. Can we genericize this and make this an open standard? Because we totally believe uh, in open standards. But by owning the technology, it gives us the ability with certain customers to, to get out in, in front of um, some of the shortcomings. of. It's not necessarily shortcomings of MQ, uh, UNS. It's shortcomings of MQTT, the technology that's been around for forever, right? It's succeeded. But inside the walls of the factory, there's just these requirements coming up that aren't quite the same as the enterprise level MQTT uh, requirements. They're different, right? We're, we're manufacturing. We are a little different. Anyone that's been here long enough gets it. But uh, anyway, more to come. Try it out. Uh, send us your feedback. We're really excited for this capability and uh, more to come in, in 3.0.